Hello everyone, as you know, I am Paul, your eHobby guy, and in today's video, we are going to be doing an in-depth review of this Latte Panda single board computer with a full version of Windows 10 pre-installed. This is the 2 gig RAM version and 32 gig onboard memory storage. It is similar in some ways to this, the Raspberry Pi 3, and so I will do some comparisons between the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Latte Panda. So let's jump right in. All right, let's get uh, into this box here and see what we have. There's the Latte Panda. It's in a sealed anti-static bag see what else is in the box this looks like a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth antenna I'll check this out and see exactly what it is here is the last thing it says time to take action user manual and so there are some instructions here I'll take a look at those and we'll get this thing powered up First looking at the Latte Panda board itself. I see the sticker here that's saying activated. So I'm suspecting Windows 10 is activated already. So let's look at what we have here on the board itself. First and foremost, I should mention that this has an Intel based processor. It's an Intel Z8300 quad core processor, and that's 1.44 gigahertz, and it can burst up to 1.84 gigahertz. Also, and this is what's really fantastic about this, is that it has a built-in Arduino, and the Arduino IDE is supposed to be installed. Take a look at that when we boot it up. So let's take a look at the board itself, the connectors, and what it's got to offer. On this side, we have three buttons. Here's one button. This is the Arduino reset button. It's a momentary push button. And over here, these two white switches, the inner one is the power button for the entire board. And this outer one here is the reset button for the entire board. Here is a block of 24 female GPIO pins for the Arduino. And here, which is something unique again, I believe, to this board, here is 10 GPIO pins that are for the Intel processor. So the Arduino processor is separate to the Intel processor, and we can use them separately. These GPIO pins can be used with the Intel processor, these, along with some others here that we'll get to, are controlled by the Arduino processor. And just to mention, the Arduino processor that we're using is an Atmega 32U4. That is the processor that is used with the Arduino Leonardo. When we do get into the Arduino portion of this, we're going to select the Leonardo as the board that we have and that we're using to program. Since we're speaking of processors, this board also has an Intel Gen 8 graphics processor. It's operating at 200 to 500 megahertz. Also, down here, right here, this is where the Wi-Fi antenna will plug in. This one that we saw earlier. Moving along to this end, here we have a 10100 Ethernet adapter. This is a 3.5 millimeter audio connector. Here we have the SD card slot. And again, this is in addition to the onboard 32 meg flash memory. So let me test this here. Yes. So this clicks on and clicks off. Unlike our friend over here, the Raspberry Pi, this just pushes into place and does not give that feedback click. So I really like that about this Latte Panda. On this end, we have a full HDMI connector. Here we have one USB 3.0 connector. And from what I understand, I think this is the first USB 3.0 single board computer port that I'm aware of. And of course, here we have two USB 2.0 ports. Continuing on here, we have a micro USB connector. And this is used for power only and not data. 
Just one quick note about the power. It is recommended to have a power supply that's capable of at least 2 amps. These pins are used for communication in Arduino projects. Right next to that right here we have 4 male pins. These are male pins again that are used for Arduino projects. Two of which are 5 volts and two of which are ground. These 6 3 pin connectors, there are 3 pins, 6 of them in all. These are also, and they're just generally labeled sensor connectors for the Arduino. And so the Arduino portion of this board, we have the main header for GPIO here, we have communication here, power here, and six sensors right here. And now moving on to the final two connectors. This connector is a ribbon cable connector for an LCD screen. And right next to it is a touch panel overlay for the LCD screen. They would plug right in here, two ribbon cables. That finishes my quick overview with the board. Just a quick comparison here with the Raspberry Pi 3. The Raspberry Pi 3 does have four USB 2.0 ports, but it doesn't have any USB 3.0. It only has one processor. It does have full HDMI, and it has audio out, which this port can also be configured to give composite video out. In many respects, you can't really compare them. This doesn't have onboard flash, but what you can compare are the GPIOs. The Latte Panda side by side with its independent onboard Arduino processor is just coming out ahead. Let's start putting some peripherals on this board. Firstly, I'll plug in the Wi Fi antenna. Here's the Wi Fi antenna. This plugs in right here. Okay, that went on nicely. There wasn't too much room for me to get my finger there. Here I just have standard USB keyboard and mouse, which I'll just plug into my USB 2.0. Here I also have a speaker. So I'm not sure if it's enabled out of the box. With the Raspberry Pi, you do have to sometimes enable audio to not go out through the HDMI, but come out the audio port itself. But we'll see when we get in. And lastly here I have just a regular HDMI cable, so let's get that plugged in. We're almost ready to give it power. I'm told, or I read in the instructions, that giving it power you must wait for it to uh, go through a small boot up process first. So here we have this blue light. Once this goes out, we're going to press the power button, which is this white button here. So there it went out. Now I'm going to press and hold this power button and let's see if we can get some action. Yes, we do have the LED underneath here. So let's take a look at the monitor to see if we're getting anything. Here we are getting a picture with the Latte Panda logo, so it looks like we're booting up. There's your standard Windows swirl. And I do have to say at this point, that my video capture device uh, malfunctioned. Uh, it wasn't working correctly and so I did have to just point the camera at the screen so my apologies for the bad quality in this section. Looks like we're getting into a Windows 10. So there we go. We have a full active Windows 10 environment and as I stated earlier we can see that the Arduino IDE does have an, uh, a shortcut right there on the desktop. But let's take a look around Windows first and do some basic functionality tests. And then we'll take a look at Arduino before we wrap it up. I'm just going to jump right into YouTube and to my own channel here and let's play one of my most recent videos. Here is my channel. So I'm just going to click on one of my most recent videos here. And I do have to say, by default, it started at a low resolution, so I immediately jumped up to 1080 resolution to see how well it would stream at a 1080 resolution. And it had problems with buffering. And so I clicked lower and lower resolutions until I could get a smooth stream without any buffering. And I ended up at 360 to 480p which was kind of disappointing. I was expecting a, a smooth streaming at 1080p. 
here I just opened up Notepad. This is uh, an eHobby Guy test. And now I'm going to save this file onto an SD card that I just plugged in. Uh, an 8 gig SD card. Here I'm just going to call it test and I'm going to click save. Now I'm just going to browse to the SD card and double check to see that yes indeed the file is there. And there it is. Here I'm just looking at some technology news on the internet and in general this is looking very good. Now we will look at the Arduino portion of this board which is really an added bonus. So here I'm opening the IDE and of course the first thing we always do with our Arduino, especially uh, something that's new like this, is open up the Blink sketch. Here I am just making sure that the Arduino Leonardo is the board that's selected and now opening the Blink sketch. I did have an issue when trying to download the Blink sketch. It failed to download so I did check the COM ports and there was a choice of two COM ports, COM1 and COM3. So I switched it to COM3 and I was able to successfully download. If you're not familiar with the Arduino, there's an onboard LED that is tied into pin 13 and that's this blue LED which we actually saw earlier. But that blue LED is the onboard LED for the Arduino that's tied into pin 13. Just in case you're wondering the pinout of all of the pins on the board, here they are, uh, but this is something that you can very easily just Google Latte Panda Pinout and you're going to arrive with this image. Just to confirm this, I did put a red LED on pin 13 and to ground with a current limiting resistor and you can see that it's flashing perfectly in unison with the blue LED. Then just to take it one step further, I did initialize a second output on the Arduino and I modified the program so that the second output would go high when the first output, pin 13, goes low. And this way I could have two LEDs that are alternating one second on, one second off. And here's what that looks like. The two LEDs are alternating. One thing that's also important to understand is that the Arduino can operate independent of the Intel processor. And so with just some power to this, without attaching any peripherals, meaning keyboard, mouse, monitor, network, adding power to the board will cause the Arduino to run and whatever program is in its memory will be executed and run. Well, there we have it. The Latte Panda by itself is certainly very impressive full Windows 10 PC. The version that I got, the 2 gig RAM, 32 gig onboard flash, was impressive in its own right. If you pay more, you can get 4 gig RAM and 64 gig flash memory. This may help it to perform a little better. I was a little disappointed in its ability to play back video. The processor did tend to get hot when I did play video on it. You could certainly add a heat fit, a cooling fan to the processor and it would perform better in that case. However, I personally would not rely on it as a media type PC or a single board computer that would be a media type PC. The big bonus for me is the fact that as a full onboard Windows 10 processor, the Intel processor, onboard flash, couple that with the onboard Arduino, we can really work within its own environment. The Arduino not being a very processor intensive programming environment, so it's perfect for an e-hobby guy, if you, if you want to call it that, for the person who's an enthusiast, a maker, electronics prototype. It, to me, it was just an amazing board. There's nothing similar to it out there. There's stuff similar, but there's nothing that compares to it, in my opinion, as of right now. It's been out for a few months, and of course, it's June 2017 now. You know, I, I, really impressed with this board, and I'm certainly going to use it. And we'll figure out exactly in what capacity I am going to use it. So I really thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Certainly rate it a thumbs up if you think it was helpful. Follow me on social media. Thank you for watching. See you next time.